So then, kicking off the summer season this year, the blockbuster summer movies, the big film of the year, The Fall Guy. And I say the big film, that was what they were hoping. Let's talk about that. Tom Ryder, the biggest action star on the planet, is missing. You need to bring him back. Or Jodie's movie is dead. Why me? You're a stuntman. Nobody's going to notice you. That's your job. No offense. I mean, some taken. You find Ryder, save Jodie's film. You get the love of your life back. I'm not the hero. I'm just the double. Not today, you're not. Tom, we only need you back on set, pal. So, let's talk about the big movie of the summer, Fall Guy. Well, it was hoping to be the big movie in the summer, but you can see why. So, The Fall Guy is based loosely on the 80s TV show starring Lee Majors of the same name uh, about a, a stuntman or a stunt artist um, called Colt Silvers and... Amber is in the corner laughing about this because when she tried to record this introduction to the film, she just get, got a bit stuck on... <laughs> he's a stunt guy called Colt Seavers. But that's what he is. Uh, he's pulled back into the industry after a break uh, because his ex-girlfriend is directing a film and she needs some help. Um, and this was quite a film. So Amber, what are your thoughts on The Fall Guy, this big action comedy? I loved it. I loved it so much more than I thought I was going to. I liked... I I didn't actually mean to watch the trailer, but I did end up watching a trailer of this movie. And I thought, oh, that sounds like fun. Like, fun summer movie. Let's go see it. But it blew my expectations out of the water. Ryan Gosling is a fantastic actor. Um, so is Emily Blunt. But Ryan Gosling, as always, steals the show. I mean, it's his film, really, isn't it? And although there's this love story set up uh, right from the start and, and it's kept throughout, it's called The Fall Guy, so it's all about him, really. Uh, focuses most of the action on what he's getting up to. So what bits did you like in particular about this story or about this film? One of the things that I really liked about this film, once I found out it was actually directed by uh, David Leach, who was actually a stunt guy, <laughs> It made me love the film so much more. He knew what he was making a film about. Yes, because you get to see all of the action shots, but like the real ones. We we watched a little um, YouTube video uh, by Corridor Digital, and he said that the way it was edited, the way the shots were, were kept in, was so that the stunt performers standing in could actually watch their stunts properly and, and not have them edited out of existence. So I, I love that. That was a really nice thing, that the the stunts felt solid. We know that there's obviously a little bit of CG in there, here and there, um, but most of it feels tactile, practical. It's incredible stuff. It was a great summer film and did not get the love at the box office that it deserved. No, I, I don't know how either. In the um, opening weekend in the US... It made about $28 million, which sounds great. Sounds really like a, a good amount of money, but no. Uh, I think Guardians of the Galaxy opened to about $100 million more than that last year. So it's being seen as a bit of a disappointment. I don't know how. I'm, I'm hoping it's got legs. I hope it, it sticks around because out of the films that we saw this weekend, this is the one I'd be more inclined to go back and see again. Um, and the word of mouth has got to be good. I don't know how anyone wouldn't enjoy this as being a big summer action, take the whole family, have a good laugh. Yeah, I totally agree. Well, I, I loved something about this film as well that most people wouldn't care about, but I thought it was a hilarious point all the way through. It's one man's quest for coffee. Every single time he wants to go and get a cup of coffee, something gets in the way. There are countless cups spilt or abandoned. Um, which I thought was fantastic because I know how that feels to want a cup of coffee and not be able to get it. <laughs> Tim is the, <laughs> the man on the quest for coffee. There was also some uh, good casting, I would say. You've got, along with Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt as the romantic leads, Aaron Taylor Johnson as the actor that uh, Ryan Gosling's stuntman is doubling for. 
and Hannah Waddingham as uh, a producer who's uh, busy working hard and constantly drinking. But what do you think about the central romance in this film? Because it does kind of poise itself as being a romantic comedy as well. It didn't, like, you know, after watching it, I don't know that I still get romantic comedy from this. I definitely think it's an action comedy that has romance in it. Okay. So were you convinced by their chemistry at all? Absolutely. I do love their chemistry. I thought they did a great job. You can tell these actors enjoy each other's company. I think uh, there's some good snappy dialogue between them. Um, There's good flirtation um, and playful banter. I thought that was kept throughout. I I don't know about some of it. I I think maybe I could have done with a little work, but it's a film that really wants to focus on the stunts. And there are moments where they have to take center stage. Let's talk about the stunts being the center stage for a second. Because that's my theory behind this whole film, actually. Now that you've gotten me into the Oscars and I am now looking through all the categories, I'm helping you watch all of these Oscar films every year and really enjoying it, actually. I am saddened to say that there is no stuntman category because it's a whole team of people working together to create these cool moments in films that people are obsessed with, but they get no credit, basically, other than just roll credits at the end where nobody actually stays afterward to watch anyway. Well, we do. We do, but no, most people don't. No. And that is literally said in the film at least once maybe even more than once that these actors these performers these artists really go unnamed unrecognized um in in the general scope of things there are obviously um some places that do but the oscars don't and we know that they want to change that at some point and there's talk of it and this year's oscars they did have Emily Blunt and Ryan Gosling introduce a little VT and mention this. But it didn't culminate in them saying, and next year there will be an award for best stunts, which is such a shame. Is it something you think we could see in the next few years, though? Absolutely. Especially with films like this that are highlighting how integral they are to every movie's experience, especially action movies. Some of this movie actually has broken some world records in filming some of these stunts. So I'm hoping that this movie helps bring that to light in being fun for the family. Great summer film. I hope this movie gets the recognition it deserves. So let's get into the spoilers for The Fall Guy so we can talk about all the points of the plot. Ladies and gentlemen, before we get started, I gotta warn you about what's about to be put into words. So if you ain't seen the movies, listen close. This song's got spoilers. Now brace yourself, here it goes. There once was a man named Norman Bates. Turned out he was his mama, oh what a great twist. Don't get me started on Tyler Durden Split. But that Bruce Willis was a ghost all along, who would have guessed it? So at the heart of The Fall Guy is a double entendre with uh, the title. He's not just the guy who takes literal falls, but he is a guy who's set up to take the fall for uh, a problem that's happening behind the scenes on the production of the movie he's working on. What were your thoughts on that aspect of the story? So honestly, at the beginning, I didn't love it because it felt a bit cheap. Some of the action-y stuff they did while this character is accidentally on drugs. <laughs> it was funny, but it felt a bit cheap. So I didn't love the chase of it all at first. But it kept getting better. And Ryan Gosling continued to carry it through, as well as his stunt double. So there's some amazing action scenes in this film. And some of which... I think it teased a little bit in the trailers. In the film, you get these long, elaborate, uh, brilliantly long takes, long cuts 
of amazing th things that I've not really seen anything quite like them. One of the key moments is where Emily Blunt's character, uh, Jody, is awaiting a cult at a karaoke bar. But he's busy fighting guys on a, what would you call that? A trash truck? A garbage truck. Garbage truck. <laughs> oh, a rubbish. What do we call them? A bin truck. A rubbish truck. A rubbish bin truck. What would you say? <laughs> bin lorry? Don't say that. Okay. Um, and there's a, a skip, and it's fantastic. I mean, it's a, a skip for those who don't know is the back of the garbage truck. <laughs> what, would, what would you call a skip? It's not a skip in America. I'll tell you that. So, what did you think about that action scene or any others? That was so epic. That was one of my favorites. In a part in the apartment fight scene was also really cool, really well done. So there, there were fight scenes with swords, there are fight scenes with guns, sticks, any kind of objects, uh, car chases, jumps, rolls, smashing through glass, absolutely every kind of action scene that we can imagine is sampled in this film. There's one thing I thought the film could have done a little better, which was the post-credit scenes, because in the post-credit scenes, there's one, uh, the first post-credit scene, which shows the actual stunt team working on the film, which makes sense. You want to see that. They want to highlight those people who've worked really hard in the background, give them the credit that they deserve. But then the second post-credit scene kind of goes previously on the four guy and takes you back into the narrative for this little piece of the story uh, in between the last few scenes. I think they should have swapped those around. I understand why they did it the order they did, um, because they wanted to show the, the real stunt team before everyone gets up and leaves the cinema um, and get that in there quickly. But at the same time, it's kind of like taking us out of the narrative and then expecting us to go back into it uh, with these cameos, with Lee Majors appearing. And I, I thought that could have done, been done a little bit better. I had no problem with either of those things. I thought they were they were both good. I just would have put them the other way around because it didn't make sense to me to show us the behind the scenes on the making of the film and then try and take us back into the story of the film. I, really, it, it was a, a fantastic story all the way through. Um, at one point, I thought the payoff wasn't going to be very good um, with the action scenes at the end. Uh, I thought the way that the... the what would you call it? The the setup of, of him being set up for murder. I didn't think the the way they resolved it was going to be great because they told us how they were going to resolve it. And then they kind of pulled a twist on that and said, no, that's not really everything. There's a, a whole action scene to come after that, um, which was about as big as you could get. I really liked the helicopter scene as well. That was pretty gripping. Also the fall. The last fall of the movie was so beautifully timed and executed. That I, is all. I've not seen a fall that long, I think, in any film. They would cut or do something with it, but that was one of the longest watching someone fall from a height uh, that I've seen in a film in a long time. One of the nicest things about that as well is that the stunt team on the, the movie that they're making in the movie, the Metal Storm stunt team, become heroes themselves they are the ones who help to get justice and to uh, get a confession at the end uh, they also the ones that save colt from a definite fatal fall i think that's a really nice payoff making them an integral part of the story and how it's resolved so i can completely see uh, how david leach is, is drawn on all of his uh, working experience all of his years in the film industry to make this story and I think he did a fantastic job. I'm kind of a little bit surprised that it took him so long to get around to this. He's made a few films already. Some people try and do things like this first. But I'm so glad he has. He's clearly worked on his skills as a director to tell a really coherent story, but also bringing all the best action. I don't know how there's going to be a better summer action film, at least for two more weeks. There might be something that might beat this. But we're going to have to go back to the world of Mad Max for that. Can we just get a small round of applause for David Leach? And for all the stunt teams that work on all these movies that we love so much. 